it's this is we are not near the saturation point the models are going to get so much better so quickly your advantage with speed and focus and conviction and the ability to react to how fast the technology is moving it is easy when there's a new technology platform to say well because i'm doing some of the ai what you can get are these short-term explosions of growth by embracing a new technology that's how specialization of labor and this sort of like shared tool chain of progress work maybe maybe like researchers at OpenAI don't know everything that it would take to go build a computer from the ground up i think it's the agi term has become hugely overloaded and as jakob said it'll be this process over a number of years but they know how to use that computer to create agi and that's a really that's like the next valuable layer you have a car that's generally reliable it gets you from point a to point b without major problems but like any vehicle it has its quirks and faults maybe the check engine light illuminates for no apparent reason maybe the brakes produce that annoying squeaky sound so naturally you take it to a mechanic for repairs now here's where things get interesting what if your mechanic isn't a person at all what if it's a robot but not just any ordinary robot performing routine maintenance. This robot doesn't just fix those squeaky brakes and send you on your way. It analyzes the entire automotive system comprehensively, discovers a fundamental flaw in the original manufacturer's design that no human engineer had ever noticed before, and then completely redesigns the braking system to be significantly safer and more efficient. It even fabricates the new parts using 3D printing technology and installs them for you autonomously. And the next time you bring your vehicle in for service, it does it again, making your car incrementally better and more intelligent every single time. That might sound like pure science fiction, something from a futuristic movie. But what if I told you that this exact scenario is already happening right now, not with automobiles, but with something far more fundamental to our modern technological world, computer code itself. For the past several years, we've grown accustomed to a certain kind of artificial intelligence, the kind you can have conversations with through a chat interface. You can ask it a question, and it provides an answer. You can request it write a poem, and it composes one. It's certainly impressive technology, but it's also fundamentally passive in nature. It waits patiently for you to tell it what to do, like a highly advanced assistant. But a revolutionary new kind of AI is emerging from research laboratories. This is agentic AI, artificial intelligence that doesn't just answer questions passively, but takes proactive action. An AI system that can be given a high-level goal, and then autonomously figure out on its own the specific steps needed to achieve that objective. And one of the first and most powerful examples of this new category of AI has an unusual name that sounds almost comical. It's called the OpenAI Agentic Automatic Security Aardvark. It's quite a mouthful, I know, but this aardvark represents far more than just a clever piece of software with a memorable name. It's a signpost pointing toward the future, a glimpse into a world that is approaching much faster than most people realize. A future where AI doesn't just perform the tasks we explicitly give it, but starts to improve itself autonomously. And that fundamental shift raises a profound question that we all need to start thinking about seriously. What happens when the student becomes the teacher? What happens when the technology we created starts to create and improve itself? It's, this is, we are not near the saturation point. The models are going to get so much better so quickly. Your advantage with speed and focus and conviction and the ability to react to how fast the technology is moving. It is easy when there's a new technology platform to say, well, because I'm doing some of the AI. What you can get are these short term explosions of growth by embracing a new technology. This is the story of the aardvark and what it reveals about the accelerating future of artificial intelligence. A future that is no longer a distant abstract dream, but a rapidly approaching concrete reality. A future that we desperately need to understand, to prepare for, and to actively shape before it shapes us in ways we cannot control. To truly grasp the profound significance of the aardvark, we need to take a step back and examine the bigger picture of AI development. For the past several years, we've been living through what historians will call an AI revolution. But it's been a relatively quiet revolution, one that's been happening mostly in the background of our daily lives. We've witnessed AI systems get progressively better at specific narrow tasks, recognizing faces in photographs, translating between languages with increasing accuracy, even driving cars autonomously. But these have all been examples of what researchers call narrow AI, an artificial intelligence that is exceptionally good at one particular thing, but fundamentally can't do much else outside its specialized domain. And I really kind of sat back in my chair 
And I was just like, a, oh man, here it is moment. I felt like I should have been able to do it and I couldn't and it was really hard, but the AI just did it like that. Yeah. It was, it was a weird feeling. Like with GPT-5, you have something that is incredibly smart in a lot of domains and it's to solve. Recently, we got gold level performance on the International Math Olympiad. Each of those problems takes about an hour and a half. The breakthrough that brought AI into mainstream consciousness was the development of large language models. Suddenly, we had AI systems that could communicate with us in natural language, could answer our questions comprehensively, and provide coherent and often surprisingly creative responses. We could ask it to compose a sonnet about a toaster, and it would. We could ask it to explain Einstein's theory of relativity in simple terms, and it would. But most people still don't fully understand that this remains passive magic. It was magic that waited patiently for us to cast the first spell, to initiate the interaction. Agentic AI represents the next evolutionary step in this technological progression. It's the fundamental difference between a magical spellbook and a magical apprentice. The spellbook can provide you with the precise incantation for any spell you desire, but you still have to be the one to speak the words and perform the ritual. The apprentice, on the other hand, can be given a high-level goal like protect the castle, and it will autonomously figure out on its own which spells to cast, when to cast them strategically, and how to combine them creatively to achieve the optimal result. This is the quantum leap that we're witnessing with the OpenAI Agenic Automatic Security Aardvark. It's not just a reference spellbook for cybersecurity, it's a cybersecurity apprentice that is learning and improving, getting better at a speed that is simultaneously exhilarating and genuinely terrifying. The compute constraints that the whole industry has been in, and our company in particular, have been terrible. Uh, we're so limited right now in the services we can offer. There's a bunch of having AI do a bunch of research, or you could choose to offer free education to everybody on Earth. No one wants to make that choice. That's how specialization of labor and this sort of like shared tool chain of progress work. Maybe maybe like researchers at OpenAI don't know everything that it would take to go build a computer from the ground up. I think it's the AGI term has become hugely overloaded. And as Jakob said, it'll be this process over a number of years. But they know how to use that computer to create AGI. And that's a really, that's like the next valuable layer. So what exactly is this aardvark system and how does it actually work? Let's return to our automotive mechanic analogy to make this concrete. When you bring your car to the robot mechanic, the first action it takes isn't to immediately grab a wrench and start tinkering. The first thing it does is read. It reads the car's entire manual from cover to cover. It studies the technical blueprints and design documents comprehensively, everything available. It wants to understand not just what the car is physically, but what it's fundamentally supposed to be. What is its purpose? Is it a sports car engineered for speed or a minivan designed primarily for safety? This is precisely what Aardvark does when analyzing a piece of software. It analyzes the entire code base comprehensively to understand its purpose, its architectural design, and its security objectives. It constructs what's called a threat model, which is essentially figuring out what the most likely security vulnerabilities might be based on the system's design. GPT-6 to feel like you know, 30 IQ points past GPT-5s. The models got better, the, UI, the UX got better, and now we have Codex. Codex is growing unbelievably fast. Once our robot mechanic thoroughly understands the vehicle, it can begin systematically looking for problems. And it doesn't just examine the squeaky brakes superficially, it analyzes the entire maintenance history of the car, every repair that's ever been performed, every component that's ever been replaced. This is exactly what Aardvark does when it scans a code base. It examines all the past changes, all the new code that's been added recently, and it hunts systematically for vulnerabilities. It's like a detective meticulously looking for clues that a crime has been committed or is about to be committed. When our robot mechanic identifies a potential problem, it doesn't just inform you about it vaguely, it shows you precisely. It highlights the exact component that's causing the problem and explains in clear, simple terms what's wrong and why it matters. Aardvark does the same thing with code. It annotates the software, leaving detailed notes for the human developers to read, explaining the vulnerabilities it has discovered. But here's where things get genuinely interesting. Our robot mechanic doesn't just take its own word for the diagnosis. It wants to be absolutely certain, so it creates a perfect digital simulation of your car, a virtual twin. And in that simulation, it actively tries to break the car. It attempts to make the brakes fail. It tries to make the engine overheat. It's systematically testing the vulnerability to determine if it's a real threat or a false positive. 
This is what Aardvark does in its sandboxed environment. It creates a safe, completely isolated copy of the software, and then tries to exploit the vulnerabilities it has found. It's like a crash test for code, a controlled experiment to validate hypotheses. And finally, once our robot mechanic has found a problem, explained it clearly, and proven that it's real through testing, it does one more remarkable thing. It fixes it. It designs a new, better component and provides you with the blueprint so you can manufacture it. Aardvark, with the assistance of another AI called Codex, generates a patch, a piece of corrected code that fixes the vulnerability. It hands this patch to the human developers, who can then review it and implement it in production. So to recap the complete workflow, Aardvark number one, understands the code. Number two, finds the vulnerabilities. Number three, explains the problems. Number four, tests the threats. And number five, fixes the issues. This is not just a spell checker for code or a linting tool. This is an autonomous security researcher. It's performing the job of a highly skilled human cybersecurity expert, but it's doing it at a scale and speed that no human could ever match. It can work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, without fatigue. And it can be copied and deployed across thousands of projects simultaneously. That's it for today, folks. See you in the next video.